What's up, y'all? Welcome to Political Fight Club. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how Joe Biden is helping climate change get worse. Uh, we're going to name five different reasons that he is actually making the climate catastrophe get worse. And uh, basically, this is just me throwing all these reasons in the face of everybody that told us that we needed to vote blue no matter who. Like uh, he was going to something do something for the environment. Like he was going to try to stop climate change like he said he was going to. That's not true. Um, and then we'll bring it full circle around to the current infrastructure bill and how he's letting that die or, or letting it get whittled down to nothing so it has no climate pr provisions in it. So one of the first things, if you guys remember, when he first took office on day one, he signed a ton of drilling permits. Do you remember that? I think it was something like, I want to say 13, but I, I think it was actually more than that. He signed a ton of drilling permits on day one, and he's been making fracking way worse by letting it proliferate throughout the country. He hasn't stopped that one bit. So tell me again, he's helping with climate change. Um, another thing he did, or that he has failed to do that he could easily do, remember, the military is the number one producer of like ozone depleting gases and contributing to climate change. Has he cut the military budget since he's been in office? No, he has not. He's actually made it go up. $25 billion. Actually, I think it's more than that. They, um, It's 25, but it... It used to be $740 billion under Trump, and as of next year, it's going to be $789 billion total for the defense budget. So is he helping combat climate change by cutting the military budget, which would be the easiest thing to do? No, he's not doing that. In fact, he's making it far worse, and he's probably going to start other wars in other countries here pretty soon that will also contribute to climate change. Um, number three. He hasn't reeled in the immense amount of carbon that is being released into the air by just the 1%. Earlier in this show, I did an episode about how the 1% produce something like 40% or higher of all ozone-depleting gases with their private jets and the way they live their lives. Um, so this is a huge problem that they always lay at the feet of the individual like middle class and working class people. Like you have to, you know, recycle. And you have to do all these things individually to make sure that we don't have climate change get out of control. Um, actually, the 1% are the ones that need to be reeled in. And by simply just passing some laws that they can't do the same practices that they're doing individually as elitists, we could actually put a dent in climate change. But no, he hasn't done that whatsoever. Why? Because he's part of the 1%. And that's all of his uh, you know buddies on the cocktail circuit, as it were. Another thing... He nixed the original deal with USPS and Workhorse. When I first started doing PFC, there was a huge story going around, at least I, I talked about it, I didn't see many other people talking about it, where they were giving out a huge contract to replace all of the USPS trucks with completely e-vehicles. And that was something Biden said specifically on the campaign trail. He said he was going to go completely e-vehicles for the USPS. That contract was likely going to go to a country or to a... Uh, Wisconsin-based company called Workhorse that makes all e-vehicles and already has a factory set up to produce the e-vehicles. The company that he actually ended up giving the contract to is Oshkosh Defenses, a defense contractor that does not make e-vehicles. They, in fact, make biodiesel hybrids. So he actually gave them more money than Workhorse was bidding, like uh, Workhorse underbid Oshkosh defenses to try to get that contract and Joe Biden actually actively actively chose to give more money to Oshkosh defenses to stay away from e-vehicles. Now since then there has been a lawsuit. Workhorse is actually suing because they showed that uh, Oshkosh, the prototype that they used when they were showing it off to the government for the USPS vehicles was not in fact the same vehicle that they were planning on using mass production with. So they lied. They shouldn't have secure, secured that contract. And by the way, they also didn't have a factory set up, which is why they had to ask for a whole bunch of extra money over what Workhorse was bidding, because Workhorse already had the factory set up to produce the vehicles. Oshkosh had to build the factory to build biodiesel hybrids, and they, in fact, have never made e-vehicles. Never. So that's another thing that he's done to make climate change, climate change a lot worse. And then lastly here, going back to the bill that's passing right now, if this infrastructure bill, the Build Back Better bill, does not pass in its current form, there will be zero climate provisions in it. It has almost none already. 
but it's going to get whittled down now that the squad has enabled Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema to decide what happens to it. It's going to get cut down even further, and you bet your bottom dollar that those hundreds of billions that are going to get cut out of there all are going to be the what's left of the climate provisions. So if the bill dies, or if it passes and it doesn't have those things in it, Joe Biden has done absolutely nothing to prevent climate change. And in fact, if you uh, read the fine print of the infrastructure bill that the squad and Joe Biden, well, the squad and Manchin and all of them have already passed and it's on Joe Biden's desk right now, you'll find out that there's actually $25 billion in subsidies to oil companies. So if the Build Back Better plan doesn't pass, things are going to get infinitely worse for climate change under Joe Biden. So remember, there were people that were telling you to vote blue no matter who. This is what they were telling you to vote for. And they're idiots.